We got some pretty interesting news for you guys, including Wikipedia being an MMO. Cyberpunk 2077 system requirements have been revealed in a new class for the Kung Fu inspired MMO Blade and Soul. Hello everyone, my name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where we cover the latest news trends and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. So if you guys got your coffee ready or beverage of choice, of course, let's go over these articles together. Cheers to you guys. So let's go ahead and get uh, started with the most unusual article so far. And for that, we head on over to massivelyop.com. And as I said before, it says in their title, Wikipedia is now an MMO according to Wikipedia itself. Now do note that this is a joke at the end of the day, but I have to admit there seems to be a small nugget of truth even if this is a prank. Now I'm gonna read this really long sentence off here, so bear with me for a minute. And it says the reason why it's considered an MMO is because its players, which are the editors, choose a race, which is their editing style, and class, editing role, and roam over the vast landscape, the article database, exploring both hidden spaces, orphan articles, and well-known boss areas, which are the featured articles. Oh, and you get experience, which is edit account uh, for playing, which is editing articles. And if you have no idea what I just said, don't worry. I kind of really don't either, but I kind of also get where they're getting at. But part of the reason why I wanted to bring up this article is because at the end of the day, it brings up the old debate. What characteristics does a game have to have in order for it to be considered an MMO? And in their next article, Star Wars The Old Republic will be getting new tier of augments with its next update. What I find really interesting about this next update is that in order to create these new tier augments, you have to gather mats where it requires you to do master mode operations and uh, ranked PvP. Now fortunately, the article does seem to indicate that these mats are tradable through the Galactic Trade Network. And the reason why I say that is because from what I can tell, ranked PvP is still the most toxic thing in the game. It is, oh my goodness, there's so much salt in ranked PvP. You buy people. <laughs> Goodbye, people. Okay. Now, master mode operations, I mean, it's certainly doable, if, especially if you actually have a really good prog team or something like that. Now, I kind of understand why they're doing this, I think, in my opinion. They're just trying to get more people to uh, experience more of their content, especially now that expansions really haven't been the quality that we've been seeing since Knights of the Eternal Throne. And for all you JRPG fans out there, but more specifically, all the Monster Hunter fans out there, in their next article, we got Capcom unveils a new single-player RPG and multiplayer monster hunter games for the nintendo switch i'm really hoping myself this is just a timed exclusive and hopefully we'll get this for the pc but that's just speculation on my end but it does go on to read that monster hunter rise and monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin both were revealed during this week's nintendo direct mini showcase now monster hunter stories is a single player rpg that follows the protagonist who has the ability to befriend monsters through the use of a kinship stone now monster hunter rise will more or less be similar to what we see with monster hunter world and will include Include new features including a new vertical movement by the use of running up sheer surfaces and using a wire bug to jump up and swing at will. And as for the multiplayer part, it will contain a four person multiplayer mode as well. Now, Monster Hunter Stories, the single player RPG, is due to be released during the summer of 2021, whereas Rise will see the launch date of March 26, 2021. This is a pretty interesting combination of things. If you always wanted to play something similar to GTA, but for Path of Exile, I guess you got something to look forward to here. Uh, in their next article, it says Path of Exile's heist expansion officially launches this afternoon, but this article was written yesterday, so I assume it's already out. And in this new expansion, it says that players will hire a crew of specialized thieves to assist them with infiltrating secure facilities to retrieve valuable artifacts. They must be careful not to trigger the alarm or else they'll be overrun with guards. And if they can't escape, they'll lose everything they stole. And next, let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from PCGamer.com. And the first one here are for all the No Man's Sky fans out there, as you'll be getting a huge update next week called Origins. Now, the studio didn't reveal what is actually contained in this new update, other than the fact that Hello Games co-founder Sean Murray hinted that it's gonna be a big one. And he goes on to say that, 
We called it Origins because it is the beginning of something new as No Man's Sky continues to grow and evolve. Although I must admit, I will find that just a little annoying because they're saying, oh, this is going to be a wonderful huge expansion or update, but we can't really tell you what it is. And one of the bigger news that we received this week in terms of gaming news is the announcement for Final Fantasy 16. I actually did a dedicated video doing a reaction and analysis of the entire... Entire... Wow. <laughs> entire trailer, excuse me. And if you're interested in that, I'll have a link to that at the top right hand corner of this video, which I do appreciate if you take a look. And in their next article, Cyberpunk 2077 System Requirements Revealed. I was actually kind of surprised at the specs that we got, but we didn't get the complete story and I'll explain why in a minute. But in terms of its minimum requirements for the processor, it says it requires an Intel Core i5 3570K or an AMD FX 8310. And in terms of the GPU, it just requires an Nvidia GeForce GTX 780, I'm not even sure if they still make those anymore, or an AMD Radeon RX 470. In terms of storage, you actually need 70 gigabytes, but a SSD or solid state drive is highly recommended. Now, in terms of recommended settings, it will require an i7 4790 or an AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. And for its GPU, it is required to have a GTX 1060 or an AMD Radeon R9 Fury. Now, I am speculating that these recommended requirements are only if you want to run the game at 1080p because we got another article here from altchar.com and it says Cyberpunk 2077 4K and ray tracing PC requirements will come at a later date. So again, just to really quick reiterate the article's point, the global community lead Mamat, I believe that's how you say his name. I do apologize if it's not correct did say in a tweet that they will release the specs for this particular version of the game closer to the actual release date and next let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from gamatsu.com and you guys already know that i try to cover a wide variety of games for every single type of person so if you're the type of person who's absolutely sick of all the violence that goes on in video games and looking for something a little different this actually might be something for you and it says here that action adventure farming rpg Kitaria Fables is coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC in 2021. And yeah, you know, it's a really cutesy little family-friendly game, very wholesome it seems like. Uh, definitely geared towards more of the younger demographic in my opinion, but if you like cats, if you like RPGs, and you like farming, hey, you got something to look forward to here. <laughs> They do have their own Steam page if you want a closer look at the game, and I'll have a link to that down in the pinned comment section below. And to all you rogue-like dungeon crawling RPG fans out there who cannot wait to get their hands on a copy of Diablo 4 but need something in the meantime, this actually might be the game for you. And even though I have heard this word being pronounced as Hades, uh, I'm going to pronounce it Hades because that's just the way I grew up pronouncing it if you grew up with uh, Kevin Sorbo's Hercules. <laughs> Disappoint! And this game, Hades, is finally exiting early access and officially launching for the Nintendo Switch, the PC via Steam, and Epic Game Store if you are interested. And as I said before, this game is a roguelike dungeon crawling game, very similar to the likes of Diablo, but in its description it does say that defy the god of the dead as you hack and slash out of the underworld in this roguelike dungeon crawler from the creators of Bastion, Transistor, and Pry. I'm not gonna lie, I actually never heard of any of those games but if you look at the reviews it's pretty impressive as it has overwhelmingly positive reviews for both recent reviews and all reviews with all reviews numbering above 25,000 reviews itself again links to this will be down in the pinned comment section below if you want to take a closer look and lastly from gamato.com we are talking about godfall godfall will launch globally for the steam platform as well as the epic game store as well as the playstation 5 on november 12th but it also will be released released in Europe on November 19th, so keep in mind for the differences. And really quick, if you don't know anything about this game, this game is a looter shooter, but in this case a looter slasher because of its playstyle. But what separates this from other looter shooters is that there's no microtransactions. So imagine a game, for example, 
example like the Borderlands series, uh, Destiny, or The Division, and not having microtransactions or a cash shop. It's really interesting as to how they will sustain the game, but at the end of the day, I'm really curious as to what this game will be like. Next, let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from MMORPG.com. And the first one here says that Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, new details available at the Tokyo Game Show on September 25th. So this is just kind of an announcement of an announcement. Not much is really known about New Genesis other than the fact that it actually isn't an expansion or an update for the Fantasy Star Online 2 game. Rather, it's actually a separate game, a separate entity of in itself. However, you could actually use assets or characters from the Online 2 game and use it to play the New Genesis part of the game. So it's two separate games where it actually shares your account somehow in some way. So definitely be on a lookout for more information and explaining how this will play out. And to all the Elder Scrolls Online fans out there, we have another article here that says, here is your first look at Macarth, and I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, which is ESO's conclusion to the dark heart of Skyrim. And it goes on to say that the new DLC will provide a new storyline which ties directly into the dark heart of Skyrim larger story. This new zone will also bring new solo arenas. The release date is set for November 2nd for the PC and Mac and November 10th for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox One. So as I said earlier, Blade and Soul will get a new update and it will also receive a new class on September 23rd. And this new class is called the Astromancer, which is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at things, the only race available that is playable for this new class is the Lin. And yes, this is the race where uh, they tend to be a bit smaller for, you know, cutesy reasons, I guess. Let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and really quick in their next article, Survival MMO Samutel is free to play until October 15th, and this is in celebration for their fourth anniversary in early access. Wow, four years in early access. That. I mean, when does it. Anyways. I unfortunately don't know too much about this game other than the fact that it looks like a sandbox MMORPG. You are able to build your own settlement or villages and it seems like to also contain some hardcore PvP elements as well as those settlements can be under attack by other players. And that wraps up today's episode. I really hope that I've earned your subscription today. If so, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification icon right next to it. I also do appreciate it if you made it with me so far because the watch time significantly helps with the algorithms. Anyways, everyone, I will finally let you guys go. I hope you guys have a blessed night and I will see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.